That was High by the Beach. It's off the new album, Honeymoon, an album from Lana Del Rey, who's on the phone with us. Hey, Lana, how's it going? I'm good. How you doing? I'm good. It was just last year that you released Alter Violence, and you went back into the studio for an entire new album. Was there a sense of urgency to get back into the studio? Yeah, a little bit, but, you know, I don't really know why. It's kind of just a, <clears throat> I think it's just a personal thing, you know? Um, but I felt like I had a couple of songs that I had been working on while I was um, mixing Ultraviolence, which took a really long time. And um, I don't know, I just wanted to see if I could start making another record. And, you know, I don't know, I guess whenever you put out a record, it's kind of a good time to work on something new because you don't, don't really have any pressure. Talk about making this album at this point in your career. You're past your debut and your sophomore release. You've worked with many different artists and you've toured. What was the process yeah. like for Honeymoon? Um, well, I mean, I think I was glad to be past that second record. <laughs> um, so it was fun. Um, I worked with... Uh, this guy that I love. He's been my producer for a really long time. His name's Rick Knowles. And, um, you know, just got to go in there every day and sing him some things I had been working on or start something new. Um, so I guess, I guess early on, I kind of wanted it to have a little bit of a noir feel. So I loved the title track, Honeymoon. And then um, I guess it kind of loosened up a little bit uh, as I went forward with songs like Freak and Art Deco. For those people who don't know who Rick Knowles is, he's worked with everybody from Tupac to Madonna to Jamie XX. Can you talk about the connection to Rick and what he brings to your music? Yeah. Uh, Rick, one of the reasons why I like Rick so much is because I think a lot of people, when they, a lot of producers, when they get in this, studio with an artist they want to challenge them or they want to kind of like break them down to build them back up again and I just find that really unhelpful but Rick always says yes um and he's just really fluid and if you know I'm kind of stuck with an idea lyrically and I just want to you know say screw it and move on he just you know doesn't really care we just move on to a new idea um so he's very easy and uh I don't know, he contributes a lot in terms of, I mean, he plays almost everything. So all the keyboard parts, um, all the guitar. Um, so he's pretty, pretty amazing. Each album of yours seems to have a really distinct narrative, and you're able to sort of adopt that narrative and really thread it throughout the entire album. Can you talk about the narrative for Honeymoon? Um, that's a good question. Well, I do love records that have a strong concept. I feel like, uh, I guess, the narrative for this um, record, it, it was kind of a tribute to L.A. And uh, I guess because of the soundscaping that we had, like a lot of amazing strings. <clears throat> um, and just, it was. I feel like the mood was really the narrative. Um, but it's a lot of just kind of descriptive pieces about, you know, driving at night or being in love, not being in love, <laughs> kind of the same, same old thing. Talk more about L.A. What's your favorite part of that city and what is it that's captivated you in a way that has made you bring it into your music? Uh, I love the weather. Like I'm here and it's, it's 90 degrees today and really hot every day. I just, I really love the hot weather. Um, and it has a good energy about it. I mean, I was in New York for a long time. <clears throat> I think, I don't know, maybe eight years. Um, and I really, I was really enamored with New York. Um, but I didn't ever meet uh, too many people that I got to make music with, like collaborate with. Um, and here, there's just so many cool artists. There's you know, like Emil Haney, who has been my producer, who I love, and Neil Krug, who's such a great photographer. My sister's here. Father John Misty is here a lot. Um, they, there's just, I, I feel like the there's a lot of artists who are coming here. So that's, that makes it really fun. 
I didn't know you were a fan of Father John Misty. We play a lot of his music on The Current. Talk about... Uh, you do? Yeah, talk about I'm him. I'm his what, number one fan. What, what do you love about <laughs> his music? We know what we love, well, but I'm curious to hear your talking, perspective. Yeah, talking about a narrative, I mean, his songs just really bring me back to why I started writing in the first place. You know, none of the fancy stuff. It's just the stories, the mm-hmm. storylines in each one of his songs. Um I feel, I feel like, is is it called I Went to the Store One Day? Yeah. Yeah, that song, it's just like, it, it kills me, you know, the way he puts things in him. I feel like he has all of his insecurities and all of his uh, hopes, and they just flow so seamlessly throughout each song. And his voice is amazing, and I've seen him live a few times. You know, we went on tour together for a minute. What was that like? Um, it was fun. He's, I mean, he he definitely brings the fun to the tour. I mean, he's really funny, um, as you probably could imagine <clears throat> if you're a fan. And also just seeing him on stage is really, you know, it's really great. So, yeah. He puts on a great show, and so do you. And you've toured a bit in the past year, uh, but we haven't seen you yet in Minneapolis. So my uh, <laughs> my question is, what do you envision for touring on this new album, Honeymoon? Um, well, I, I definitely think I'm going to, well, you know, I did, I did do a U.S. tour <clears throat> this year, but it was, it was amphitheaters. Mm-hmm. And then last year I did, um, I did like a smaller U.S. tour. Also. And you played some dates with Courtney Love as well, right? I did. Yeah. I played eight shows with her. What was that like? I mean, talk about a dream come true. Right. You know? She's um, she's pretty much everything you think she's going to be, and a lot more. You talked about Los Angeles and the sort of intersection of the arts, and I know movies and film have been a huge influence on your work, and they're they're part of, you know, everything that you do, especially with your music videos. Can you talk a little bit about the uh, vision and for for the videos around Honeymoon? It started with kind of an at home VHS video I was doing for the song Honeymoon. Um, where I was sitting on the hill and then a star bus went by and I panicked for a minute and he got it on camera. And, uh, you know, I was thinking how funny it was that I was worried that someone would see us filming. Um, And then, you know, I started thinking about, um, you know, I started thinking about this idea for High by the Beach, um, which kind of had a similar theme, like, you know, being afraid that you were being watched while you were at home. And uh, so I guess there's like a small sense of glamorized paranoia running between those two. I mean, you you haven't seen the full um, video for Honeymoon because I, I didn't put it out yet. I don't know if I will, you know, because I made it myself. So um, and the music to watch boys to is just I mean, I don't really know if it kind of has a lot of L.A., nostalgia in it but the set is kind of you know it's lush and very noir because it's black and white so you know there's some there's some similarities running through some of the videos i guess you talked about the idea of paranoia and someone watching you um and that does come through on high by the beach on that song yeah is that true in your life too do you feel like people are watching um i do feel i've i've had a couple of situations where i you know, wished that there was not cameras there. So, yeah, I guess it was inspired by that. I mean, yeah, it'd be weird to say that it wasn't inspired by that. So, yeah. I want to ask you one last question about some of the um, some of the other artists who have influenced your new album. And I want to start with T.S. Eliot, the American poet. Huh. You borrowed from him and credited him yeah. for the interlude yeah. on the album. Can you tell us about how you discovered his poetry and how it made it onto the album? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I originally wasn't going to use that little excerpt, but um, I was looking up poems about time and timelessness. And he has that line about the still point of the turning world. And that's kind of where everything's real. And I loved that because I feel so often I'm trying to get 
everything to just feel like it's moving and to feel new and um but I always but I always just you know feel really caught up in a, a real stillness and um I always kind of wonder if that's I don't know if that's what it feels like <laughs> in the great beyond <gasps> or whatever so he uh I in love death that is I what you're saying little excerpt. in death is that what you're saying yeah, or beyond. Yeah. yeah. The other artist who you pay tribute to on this album is Nina Simone. You close out mm-hmm. the album with Don't Let Me Be Misunderstood. Can you talk mm-hmm. about the decision to include that song and to include it as the last song on the album? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I, uh, you know, in uh, on Ultraviolence last year, I um, did the cover of uh, The Other Woman, and... You know, I wanted to do another cover to wrap up this record. And Don't Let Me Be Misunderstood is one, definitely one of my favorites um, that she sings. So, I mean, melodically, it's probably my favorite. And, you know, the message, I liked it too. Yeah, you know, just a soul whose intentions are good. <laughs> Lana, thank you so much for joining us on the phone You're today. Welcome. Let's Thank go, you. Let's listen together to your version of Nina Simone's Don't Let Me Be Misunderstood. You're listening to 89.3 The Current.